This is the AIM Max Plus. Obviously, it's a laptop, but it's also a gaming machine, a workstation, an entertainment hub. And that's because this is powered by the AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. What that brings us is 16 cores, 32 threads, all based on Zen 5. And we also get the most powerful iGPU on the market today, the Radeon 8060S. AIM is a newer laptop company that's recently popped up online, and they were kind enough to send over an early unit to take a look at. And their goal here is to create a laptop that you can basically do anything with and also try to keep the price down so it doesn't have all the bells and whistles like some of the other laptops or even tablets that we've seen powered by the Max Plus 395. If you've been keeping an eye on devices powered by this chip, you know how expensive they can get. Uh, HP has their HP Z2 Mini, which retails for like $4,500. It's usually on sale for $26. Mini PCs range anywhere from $1,300 up to $2,000. And there's a couple other tablets and laptops on the market with this chip. AIM is trying to come in at that sub $1,000 price tag for a laptop like this, and it's still pretty expensive. But when anybody ever tells me sub $1,000, I think $999.99. So I'm still going to take this with a grain of salt. And I told them this before I even made the video. Until we see these things up for sale at that price point, then it's still a bit of a pipe dream in my opinion. They said they're shooting for an early October launch and I'll leave links in the description. But the only other thing this came with was a 230 watt power supply. And that's because it's an earlier unit. But one of the cool things here is you can actually charge this using a 140 watt PD USB type C charger over USB 4. So if you've got 140 or 165, then you shouldn't have any power limits on this APU while it's plugged in. I mentioned that there's not a lot of bells and whistles here with this laptop, and that's what they're doing to try to save cost. It's got a decently sized trackpad. It's not glass covered, but it feels good. Chiclet style keyboard with some decent travel, and it is backlit. It's just a single zone white LED with five steps of adjustment. The whole laptop is constructed of aluminum, and it's not an OLED display. That would have brought the cost way up. What we've got here is a really nice IPS with the resolution of 2560 by 1600. It is a 120 hertz VRR display with up to 600 nits of brightness. Like I mentioned, we've got that AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, 16 cores, 32 threads, base clock of 3 gigahertz with a boost up to 5.1. And this is utilizing that Radeon 8060S iGPU with 40 compute units. It's based on RTNA 3.5 and it will boost up to 2900 megahertz. AMD does offer the Max Plus 395 with three different RAM variants, 32, 64, 128. But right now they're only thinking about the 32 gig version to keep the cost down. It's running at 8000 megatransfers per second a 16 inch, 120 hertz IPS display with a resolution of 2560 by 1600 and up to 600 nits of brightness, two M.2 2280 slots internally. One's gonna be populated from the factory, but these will support two terabyte drives each. So you can bring the total storage up to four terabytes in this thing. It's got an 80 watt hour battery with 65 watt fast charging capabilities, Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.3, and this is going to be running Windows 11 out of the box. I've had the laptop up and running for a little while now, and performance is great the way it is set up out of the box, but I know we can get a bit more out of it because I've tested this chip before in many PCs, and by upping the TDP, we can gain more on the CPU and iGPU, but I wanted to test it just like it is out of the box, and as you can see, we've got that AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, 16 cores, 32 threads, 32 gigs of RAM running at 8,000 megatransfers per second. And I've dedicated eight gigs over here to the Radeon 8060S iGPU, but it's saying 8.5. And I did this from AMD software. So from performance tuning right here, custom, select an amount below. I do wish we had a 10 gig option or even a 12 gig. Because uh, with some newer AAA games at 1440p or 1600p, given the 16 by 10 aspect ratio, we're getting close to going over that 8 gigs of VRAM. But uh, either way, performance here is great. And with 8 dedicated on this 32 gig system, it's left us with 24 gigs of system RAM. I'm in performance mode uh, from Windows, and I have not found a way to change the TDP from the manufacturer. We could use a third-party application. I did test Universal x86 Tuning Utility, and it does work. But if I run a stress test here with CPU-Z, right down here, you'll see it jump up to 65 watts. 
Now I've te now again, I've tested this chip a few times in different systems. In these newer mini PCs with good cooling systems, we can take this thing up to 120 watts. So we are going to be losing out a little bit and you know, at a higher wattage, it's going to get a lot hotter here. It's going to burn more battery in a laptop, but it will allow us to get the higher clocks on the GPU and CPU. So we're going to be testing at 65, uh, just across the board, all the gaming, all the benchmarks that we've got going on here. And speaking of benchmarks, here's Geekbench 6. And at the top, we've got that Max Plus 395 at a 65 watt TDP. Single core and multi are looking great here. And I kind of wanted to face this off against the AMD Ryzen 9 9955HX 3D. And as you can see with that X3D chip, which is coming in higher end gaming laptops, it's beaten this one out in single and multi at a 65 watt TDP. But one thing to keep in mind here is both of these chips can run at a higher TDP, given that the cooling system will support it. Checking out Cinebench R24 at a 65 watt TDP. Single core on that Max Plus 395, 84. On the 9955HX3D, it's up to 106. And for multi-core, the X3D chip did come ahead again, but not by that much because both of these chips have 16 cores, 32 threads, all based on Zen 5. And the final benchmark I ran here was 3D Mark Time Spy. We got a total score here at 65 watts of 8,845. Our graphics score was 8,565. For an iGPU to score this high, it's pretty impressive. And just to kind of give you an idea here, I also ran this benchmark on one of my laptops. It's got an AMD Ryzen 9 7940HS and an NVIDIA RTX 4060 laptop version. So the notebook version of that 4060. And that system scored an 11,238. But the thing to keep in mind here is the dedicated GPU over there is pulling 90 watts all on its own. The 7940HS up to an 80 watt TDP. So total package power between that GPU and CPU is 170 watts, and we're only at 65 watts with the Max Plus 395. Now it's time to see how this thing handles gaming, and the first one we have is Cyberpunk 2077, 2560 by 1600, high settings with FSR set to balance, and we're seeing some really great performance here, looking at an average of around 72 FPS. I've got Afterburner up in the top left hand corner so we can check out the clocks on everything and that CPU temp. This is something I was a little worried about. It's got a dual fan quad heat pipe cooling system and the fans do spin up a bit. It's not super loud like a gaming laptop maxed out with an RTX 4070, but uh, it's definitely noticeable here at that 65 watt TDP. The next one I wanted to test was Elden Ring. We're at 1600p high settings and uh, at ultra it's anywhere from 57 to 60 FPS and that's kind of been the case on a lot of different GPUs, at least lower end GPUs that I've been testing recently. To tell you the truth, I wouldn't mind taking this to ultra at 1600p and just getting a few frames less. If I didn't have that frame counter on, it's something I'd never notice. But if you need that steady 60, set it to high. Here's Spider-Man 2, and I did run into a couple issues here and there. There is some stuttering going on, and I think it has to do with shader cache. I did install the latest GPU driver for this 8060S. It's available over on AMD's website. Usually that clears the cache. I probably should have just went back with it, but we're at 1600p high with FSR frame gen on. And even with frame gen on, we still get that stutter every once in a while with it. Here's Forza Horizon 5, and I knew it was going to run really well. We're at 1600p, ultra settings, no scaling whatsoever going on, seeing an average over 90 FPS. And this is a very well optimized game. I do believe on this system here, if we were plugged into a 4K monitor, we could run this over 60 at 4K ultra. And finally, we've got Fortnite. I don't play this, so I'm not exactly sure where to start. And if I went into any kind of battle, I'd just get uh, destroyed immediately. I'm just in the Party Royale area. Ultra settings, 1600p with no scaling. If you want to add some scaling here, you could always use XESS, even though we're using an AMD chip. And play this at 120 FPS all day. Now it's time to talk about CPU temps, and through all of my testing, I have hardware info running in the background. 
This did way better than I thought it would, but we're only at that 65 watt TDP and we can take this chip up even more. I was able to get it up to 80 watts with ease and I know I could have probably pushed it a bit more using a x86 tuning utility, but through all of my testing, we were at that 65 watt and the temps were way better than I thought they'd be. When it comes to average gaming temps, only 68 degrees Celsius, and the maximum temperature that I saw out of this thing was uh, while well, I ran Cinebench R24. It maxes out 16 cores, 32 threads for 10 minutes, 86 degrees Celsius. And while Cinebench was running, those fans were definitely spinning up, I guess as high as they could go there. Did get a bit loud. And while gaming, it's a little noisy, but it's not as bad as I've seen out of gaming laptops with dedicated GPUs in the past. So overall, yeah, if they can hit that price point for this 32 gig model with that Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, I think this would be really appealing to a lot of people who wanted to get their hands on this chip. But even if this was, let's say, priced at that $999 price point, you could probably pick up a gaming laptop that's going to outperform it in the long run. But in the end, it's always going to be up to you. And I will have at least one more video coming up. I do want to install SteamOS or Bazite on this. Unfortunately, we can't get official SteamOS running on this chip just yet. But Bazite does work with that Max Plus 395. So that would be really interesting to check that out. And as soon as they lock down a real release date, I will post it up in my community section. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If there's anything else you want to see running on this thing in my next video, let me know in the comments below. Like always. Thanks for watching.